Okay, uh, we're going to do a Rashi today from the sixth Aliyah since it's Friday, but as a bonus, uh, we'll also do a, a Rashi from the seventh Aliyah just to make sure that no one feels Shabbos is left out. Uh, by the way, Sunday is always still left out since we don't do it on Sunday. But if you come to Minchamarav on Sunday, uh, sure, I'll usually do one because uh, we usually have a few minutes to spare. But either way, let's uh, get... We could still on. on Mondays, we could do a double. Okay, we'll try that too. We'll try that too. All right, uh, just to bring up our Parsha here. In the sixth Aliyah, uh, you know, the Parsha is known as Chaye Sarah, and uh, really the life of Sarah is really the death of Sarah, as the beginning of this Parsha tells us about uh, her death and her burial. Uh, but really, this is the Parsha of Avram's death as well, and sometimes gets overlooked and overshadowed uh, by Sarah. There's a lot of parallels in the way that Avram's death and Sarah's death are actually described, and a lot more to say about that. But after his death, uh, it's a beautiful pasuk, which says, Yitzchak and Ishmael bury their father Avram after his death in Marasamach Pela, in the, the field of Ephraim and Sochar Achiti, which is Al Pnei Mamre. Now, as always, there's a lot to say about this pasuk. It gives a very, very specific detail. It could have just said Marasa Machpelah. We know where that is. We had so much story in the beginning of the Parsha about Avram's purchase of Marasa Machpelah. We know where it is. We know he brought it from Ephraim ben Sochar. We know it's Al Pnei Mamre. So here it goes through El Marasa Machpelah, El Sede Ephron, Asher Al Pnei Mamre. So you have to wonder why so much specificity, so much detail about this makom, about this place. But what Rashi picks up here on this pasuk is the fact that both Yitzchak and Ishmael are mentioned over here at the burial, at the funeral of Avram Avinu. And he makes a beautiful point based uh, on the Gemara. Mikan she'asa Yishmael tshuva, v'holich es Yitzchak lefanav, v'hu seva tova she'nemra be'avraham. We learn from this pasuk that Yishmael, in the end of his life, did tshuva. We talked about this in the context of Terach, another Rashi we learned way back, Parshas Lech Lecha, that perhaps in the end, Terach also did tshuva at the end of his life. And we talked about that a little bit at the time. But from this pasuk, an even more famous idea emerges, and that is Ishmael did tshuva. We know, you know, based on Chazal, uh, certain behaviors of Ishmael that were looked upon in a negative way. We certainly know about his banishment from the home. We certainly know his estrangement from Avram, from Yitzchak, much speculation in the Medrash about what happened to Ishmael after he left, what happened to their relationship uh, after he was gone. But in the end of the day, although we don't really see him appear much in the story, we see him here appear at the funeral of Avram Avinu. And what Chazal deduced from this is that perhaps he did tshuva. And the way they deduce it is not simply <coughs> from the fact that he's mentioned as being present at the funeral, because that's not necessarily indicative of very much. <coughs> he might have just come as a spectator. He might have just come out of reverence to his father, but that didn't necessarily mean he did tshuva. But uh, Rashi sort of hints to it here, but this is elaborated more uh, in the Gemara. The Gemara spells out that it's because of the order of the children here. Vayikburu oso Yitzchak v'Yishmael. If you're going in order of who's older, you would have said Yishmael v'Yitzchak. The fact that Yitzchak is mentioned first is perhaps, perhaps indicative of the fact that Yishmael honored Yitzchak in this moment, despite his younger age, that Yishmael honored Yitzchak and put him first. And that kind of moral behavior, that kind of reverence, for the Mesorah of Abraham and the traditions and whatever you could call them, the mitzvahs or the morality that they kept, that's what's indicative here of his tshuva uh, at this moment. And it's a beautiful thought that even a person like Yishmael, who in our tradition is deemed to be so evil and so cruel and perhaps uh, so bad, uh, is able to do tshuva, it should be inspiring to all of us about our possibility and capability of doing tshuva as well. And of course, as Rashi mentions in the end, Earlier on, when we learned that Avram died, the Seva Tova doesn't only mean at a ripe old age, but Seva Tova means he died in peace, and he died in happiness, and he died in satisfaction. And Rashi now posits that the reason for that, the reason why the Torah is able to give him that description is not because of his wealth, and not because of his accomplishments, and not because he converted so many people, and not because he brought ethical monotheism into the world, but because, perhaps prophetically or perhaps min Hashemayim, he saw that Ishmael, his own son, did tshuva, and his two sons stood together at his funeral. And that was a comforting feeling, a comforting thought uh, for, for Avram as he left the world. A very moving uh, description, I think, and uh, leaving us a lot to think about. One more Rashi from Shavi. Um, we learn in the end of the Parsha, you know, 
straddling here uh, between Shishi and Shvi. The beginning of Shvi, we learn all about Yishmael's descendants. And then in the end, it tells us the years of his, his life. Perhaps in the light of this Rashi about Yishmael's tshuva, we understand why he's mentioned so prominently here and his descendants are mentioned. But even without that Rashi, one um, could imagine that it's important for us to understand the lineage of who comes from Yishmael. But Rashi wonders why it's important for us to know his age. Why is it important for us to know that he died at 137 years old. Shnei Yishma, shana, So Rashi actually tells us over here, Amar bar Abba, lama nimnu shnosav Ishma. Why are the years mentioned over here? Kedei liyaches ben shenosav shal Yaakov. All as a reference point, so that we could understand better the timeline of Yaakov's life. So it's not inherently important to understand how old Yishma was when he died, but it's in a reference point in the Torah that helps us to understand something about Yaakov's life. What do we understand? We learn from this that perhaps Yaakov spent 14 years in the yeshiva Ashem Ve'ever. As he left his father's home before he arrives in Lavan's house. There's a missing segment of Yaakov's life, which... Chazal imagine is when he goes off to study in the yeshiva of Shem Ve'ever, whatever that meant. We know that when Yaakov left his father, the whole Suda, the Nizid Adashim, that whole mourning ceremony, um, after that, a uh, little bit later on, uh, Yishmael dies as Yaakov leaves his father's house. Um, we learn from the Gemara and various Chazals and the attachment of all these Tzukim to put together a picture of the chronology of Yaakov's life. And we learn that those 14 years uh, perhaps uh, were spent in the Yeshiva of Shem Ve'ever. Um, I just want to leave you with that thought, which is a little bit strange to tell us that the whole reason why Yishmael's lifespan is mentioned is to teach us something about Yaakov, which is very obscure, like he went 14 years Shem Yeshiva Shem Ve'ever. But uh, perhaps all it's really telling us and highlighting for us is uh, the importance that Chazal placed on that learning that Yaakov did. Um, perhaps what it highlights to us is that no matter how you figure it out, it's important for us to know from various perspectives and in various ways uh, that Yaakov spent 14 years studying in that yeshiva. And of course, whatever yeshiva means at that time. But what that tells us is that even a person like Yaakov, Ishtam Yoshev Ohalim, a person who learned so much from his father, a person who embodied so much about what his father represented and what his grandfather represented, still had more to learn and sought out those opportunities, not only in the tranquility of life, but in the most difficult moments of life. He was running away from his brother, Esau, trying to kill him. He was on his way to some foreign land, who knows what, and he still made the time in the effort to study Torah. And perhaps it's that Torah that he studied in Yeshiva Shem Ve'ever that kept him for so long afterwards as he entered the house of Laban, a place that was so foreign to his own values. And perhaps that's what strengthened him in that moment. You might imagine, oh, I'm running for my life. What should I spend time on now? You know, I'm not studying Torah. I should go and, uh, you know, take care of physical matters, take care of my safety. But Yaakov understood that take care, take, taking care of his learning and his spiritual matters would help him in every realm of life. And perhaps that's something that important for us to remember as well. Wish you all a great Shabbos and a safe...